Welcome back. In this video, chapter 3, video 7, we're going to cover the truth tree tests for single formulas and pairs of formulas. This actually turns out to be much more complicated than it is for sets, arguments, and entailments. Because depending on what results you get, you may have to do two trees. So I'm not going to cover every possibility here, but I'm going to go through some useful examples. So if we're thinking about single formulas, single formulas can have two to three of those five properties we've been talking about. If it's true for every truth value assignment, it's going to be truth functionally true and also truth functionally satisfiable. If it's false for every truth value assignment, it's going to be truth functionally false, but also truth functionally falsifiable. If it's true on some truth value assignments and false on others, then it is satisfiable contingent and falsifiable. Now, the tests for these properties can be a little bit confusing. Suppose a formula is truth functionally true. That means it's true on every truth value assignment, which means that its negation is going to be inconsistent. No way for its negation to be true, since P itself is always true. Hook P will always be false. So the little set containing just the negation of our candidate formula is going to be inconsistent and have a closed tree, meaning it's truth functionally true. Conversely, if it's truth functionally false, then the formula itself is always false, and the set containing just it is going to be inconsistent, having a closed tree. Now, of course, if P is satisfiable, if it can be made true, then the set containing just the formula itself is consistent and will have an open tree. If it's falsifiable and can be false, then the set containing just its negation is consistent and will have an open tree. And given any formula P, if it's truth functionally contingent, that is, if it can be true on some truth value assignments and false on others, then the set containing P is going to be consistent and have an open tree, and the set containing not P is going to be consistent and have an opening tree. So the upshot here is, and I'll demonstrate this in just a minute, depending on what's going on with this candidate formula P, it may have both an open tree for itself and for its negation, and we need to know when both of those happen. So for example, if we test a formula and it has an open tree, we know that it's satisfiable, but it also might be truth functionally true, so we have to test its negation to see if it's always true. The flowchart for this process, which you can find in your PowerPoints, looks like this. You can see it's pretty complicated. In essence, if the formula is either truth functionally true or truth functionally false, and you guess right and get a closed tree, then you finish the process. But whatever the situation, if you get an open tree, then you need to do the other side. And depending on what you get there, you may need both trees. As an example, let's start with this formula. The question might say, use a truth tree to determine which of the five semantic properties of individual formulas this formula has. So what we can do is just test the formula itself. So a single formula in the trunk of the tree, it's a disjunction, so it's going to branch into the negation of the antecedent and the consequent as is. But that is also a conditional, so it is going to branch into the negation of the antecedent and the consequent as is. And if you check out these branches, they are all open. So we have at least one open branch which gives us an open tree, and that tells us that this formula is truth functionally satisfiable. It can be true. In fact, each of these branches describes a truth value assignment on which it would be true. So we know this right now. Given that we know that it's truth functionally satisfiable, we still need to determine whether it's truth functionally contingent, that is, it could also be false, or is truth functionally true. It can only be true. And to test that, we need to test the negation of the original formula. 
So we take the whole original formula, put it in brackets or parentheses, whichever you like, negate the whole thing. Now this is a negated conditional, which stacks to the antecedent as is and the negation of the consequent. And we have another negated conditional left to decompose. So when we do that, it's going to go to the antecedent as is and the negation of the consequent. And now we look and see we've got not A and A there. There's only one branch on this tree, so we have a closed tree. And since we tested the negation of the original and it has a closed tree, we know that it's truth functionally true. So that's our answer. Now notice, if we had done this tree first, we wouldn't have had to, we wouldn't have had to do this tree at all because it would have gotten us the result truth functionally true, which as I'm sure you'll remember implies that it's satisfiable, and so we would be done. So a good strategy here is if you look at this formula and you suspect that it might be truth functionally true, then do the tree for its negation first, and if you're right, you've got your answer. In fact, you've got both answers, and you'd be done. If, however, you have no idea, you can just start with either one. And if you get an open tree, there's still more work to be done. In any case, if you wind up with a closed tree, your work is done. So as a quick example, take this formula, which I'm sure you'll recognize is going to be truth functionally false. Since we suspect it's truth functionally false, what we should do is test the formula itself and expect it to close. So, we put that formula in the trunk of a tree, we decompose it. Obviously, it immediately closes. So the formula itself cannot be true, therefore it is truth functionally false. We have no further work to do. Let's take a look at uh, one more example of an individual formula. Now looking at this, you might not suspect that it is truth functionally true, truth functionally false, or satisfiable. You might not know, so just go ahead and do one of the tests. Let's start with the formula itself. Now it's a conjunction, so it's going to stack to the one conjunct and the other conjunct. And then we've got a disjunction that's going to branch like that. And this branch closes. But we have an open branch, so we have an open tree which means the formula we tested, the original formula, is satisfiable. Since the formula itself has an open tree, it is truth functionally satisfiable. Now, whenever we do a truth tree test for a single formula and get an open tree, we need to do the corresponding test. So since we tested the original formula first, we now need to test its negation. Now that is a negated conjunction, so it is going to branch into the negation of the one conjunct and the negation of the other conjunct. We still have a negated disjunction here. That is going to stack again to the negation of each disjunct. So now we have two open branches. What's important is that we have at least one. So we have an open tree for the negation of the original formula. And that tells us that the original formula is truth functionally falsifiable. So those two together obviously imply that is truth functionally contingent. Here we see the decision chart for testing pairs of formulas for equivalence, contradiction, or neither equivalent nor contradictory. And as you can see, it has the same shape as for individual formulas. If you have a suspicion that the two formulas are equivalent, you should test their negated biconditional. Because if they're equivalent, their biconditional will always be true, meaning the negated biconditional is inconsistent and will cause a closed tree. If you think they're contradictory, then their biconditional can never be true, and so that would create a closed tree. If they're neither equivalent nor contradictory, you're going to get an open tree in either case, and you will need two trees to show that. A couple of examples will help.
Take this pair of formulas. We want to know, with a truth tree test, whether the pair is equivalent contradictory or neither. It's going to turn out that these are equivalent, so if you suspected that, the best case would be to test the negated by conditional, and when it closes, you'll know that they're equivalent and you can be done. But suppose we don't know that. Let's go ahead and test the by conditional. We'll set that up like this. One of the problems here is that we're always testing by conditionals, which of course branch and stack. So the trees are a little more complicated. So on the left hand side of the branch, we'll stack the two sides of the by conditional as is. On the right hand side, we'll stack their negations. You have to be careful with the hooks and parentheses. This is not a double negation because there's a parenthesis separating the two hooks. That outer hook has scope over the whole formula inside the parentheses, so you can't hide a double negation step there or complete a double negation step. Just be careful of that. Now, I'm going to do the right hand branch first because it just stacks up. So if we deal with that negated disjunction, we can hide a double negation step here and just go to A stacked with hook B and then decompose this. The negated conditional stacks to the antecedent as is and the double negation of the consequent. Or sorry, the negation of the consequent. Now on the left hand branch we've got disjunction, so it's going to branch into two disjuncts and then on each of those open branches we're going to get the negation of the antecedent plus the consequent as is, negation of the antecedent plus the consequent as is. We have a bunch of open branches here and we tested the biconditional of the two so we know that they're not contradictory. That doesn't tell us whether they're equivalent or neither contradictory or equivalent. So now we need to test the negated by conditional of those two. And that's going to look like this. Remember, this negation here is going to have scope over that whole by conditional. And this is the rule we're applying here. And again, you need to be careful with hooks and parentheses when you're doing this process. So it's going to branch, and on the left side, we'll put the left side of the inner biconditional as is, and then the negation of the right hand side of the biconditional. And on the right hand branch, we're going to put the negation of the left hand side and the right hand side as is, and then we can decompose. Uh, let's start over here. That's a negated conditional, so what I'm going to get is a stack of the antecedent as is and the negation of the consequent. Then when I go to decompose this, it's going to branch into the two disjuncts as is, both of which will close. Not A, A, B, not B. When we go back to the right hand branch, do this one first to get the stack, the negation of each side of that disjunction. And then this is going to branch, and both of those close. B not B not A A. Here, all branches close, so we have a closed tree on the negated by condition of the original formulas. So it means that they are truth functionally equivalent. So had we done this tree first, we wouldn't have had to do the original tree. Okay, one last example where we get neither equivalent nor contradictory. Let's take a really simple case. So if we test their biconditional, that remains open. So it is not contradictory, but in theory, that pair could still be equivalent, so we need to test their negated by conditional. And that branches to these two stacks. Now, if we look at these branches, we see that some of them close. This one has not A, A. This one has not B, B. 
and this one has both not AA and not BB. So those all close, but we have two open branches. So we have an open tree on the negated by conditional. So it is not, the pair is not equivalent. So it's neither contradictory nor equivalent. Now you may notice a couple of things. Truth tables are actually going to be quicker for single formulas and pairs of formulas in many cases. Truth trees might be quicker for consistency, validity, and entailment. The difference is when trying to figure out all five properties of a single formula, we need to know what all the possibilities are and whether certain things happen or not. Same thing for pairs of formulas. But with consistency, validity, and entailment, we're searching for a particular set of truth value assignments. In the case of consistency, one that makes all members of the set true. And in the case of validity and entailment, one that makes all the premises or members of the set true and the conclusion or target false. And so in the latter cases, right, one tree suffices. We're searching for that particular truth value assignment and it either fails or succeeds and we know the answer. With single formulas and pairs of formulas, there are different combinations that might occur. And so it can sometimes be more time consuming to do the tree test in those cases. Hope that helps.